Hi there, and thanks for popping in. Well, you know what? I am currently at 97 subscribers, uh, which means I'm almost at the 100. So all I need is three more, but please don't hold yourself back. I can have more than that for sure. So please hit the subscribe button and hit the like, and also hit the little bell so you get notifications when my next video is coming out. Now then, today is going to be a gem. I have with me a voice actor who's had over 20 years experience of working in the voiceover industry, and he's worked across many, many different major brands in the United States, and in fact, all over the world. He's worked across many different genres, and today he's still working very, very hard and is more successful than he ever was. And the good news is he still keeps going, which gives me hope and inspiration. You know, when I was starting out, I was doing my research. You know, you sit there in front of the computer and you, you, you try and find out about voice actors and voice work and all this kind of stuff. And I came across his website. It was uh, voiceacting101.com. I found it to be a brilliant resource for knowledge to get me started, to just get me off the road. And I've been sticking with him, in, uh, been sticking with him ever since. So what I wanted to do is invite him along and have a, an interview with him and find out a bit more about what makes him tick. He's since then, he's released some courses, which I couldn't wait to get my hands on because they were brilliant. Um, we'll find out more about those in the interview. And um, he's also now got his own podcast, which is called the Voice Acting 101 podcast. And that is also a gem, which has some brilliant voiceover knowledge for you to, to, to glean from it. It's really good. And what I like about Jason is that he doesn't mess about. He's like, he's give you the facts quick, 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 and let's go. So his podcasts are very short, about 10 minutes, and he gives you what you need to know, and then bang, you're off. You know, because he's a busy man too. And yeah, so let's meet the man in question. Let's find out more about my guest today, who is Mr. Jason McCoy. Hi, Jason. Uh, hey, Richard. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm excellent. It's so good to see you. Yeah, you too. I mean, we've we've uh, we've communicated a lot over email, but we've never actually spoken face to face before. Right. I think it's been what has it been a couple of years that we've been communicating. It has been a couple of years, yeah. In fact, yeah. I think you were probably one of the first people I started communicating with with regards to voiceover when I started doing my research. Wow, I'm honored. And, yeah, <laughs> it's all <laughs> your fault, man. <laughs> well, it looks like you've got a great setup. Yeah, thank you, yeah, yeah. Um, as my subscribers and viewers will know, I spent um, a few months building this in my spare time, and uh, they can watch all the whole video series of how it came together, and... Um, it's yeah, I think it's a good result. It's yeah. uh, it's turned out good. I'm uh, very happy with it. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, uh, I watched the videos too. They, it was great. Great seeing the uh, step by step like that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know I try to make it you know real, which is what it is really. It's just uh, you know show you the, the the pains of making something like this because it's it's not always going to go smooth, right? You know, and um, and you have a few problems that you have to face. And I think if you just show that realism to someone who's thinking about building their own booth and they need to have a realistic view sure of, you know, what effort is it really going to take yeah you know okay. absolutely and uh, so whereabouts are you in the states so i am in orientation yeah so i'm in uh, maryland so i'm closer to the ocean uh i'm i'm about 30 minutes away from the ocean and i'm about five hours south of new york uh three hours or so to DC. So I've got some big cities near me. I never, wow. never travel to them for voiceover, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of out in the country. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So you get the, the nice fresh country air whenever yeah. you get outside the studio, that is. And I must say, that's a very nice studio. Look at it. Huh? Thank cool. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've moved around quite a bit. You know, I've, uh, uh, my wife and I, when we moved into the house, I had one spare bedroom as a uh, as a studio and then as kids came i kept moving to the next spare bedroom and so finally i just built out uh this studio right here nice did you did you throw the kids out into a smaller room and you took the bigger one or how did that no work? they got the bigger room damn man can you believe that <laughs> uh, how, what, what kids have you got two girls is it or i've got uh, two boys and one girl so oh, nice. uh, nine seven and four oh, that's a nice mixture yeah yeah. yeah, two boys, so you can uh, you can bully the girls whenever necessary. 
Uh, get your own way, but I'm sure they, uh, I'm sure they control the house anyway, right? Right, right. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll look out for her when when they get older. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, you play guitar, I guess, or is that just decoration? It's kind of decoration now. I used to, uh, I used to play, and I still pick it up every every once in a while, but not as much as I would like to. Yeah, yeah, I, I have one as well. I have an acoustic guitar under the okay. bed. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's about as far as it gets. Yeah, but yeah. it's one of those I like to... to take up one day. Yeah, I like to be creative, but you know, there's only so many hours in a day that you can you can work on things like that. So exactly, it's yeah. there if I if I have spare time. Yes, if that's possible. Right. Okay. So uh, for for those uh, viewers and for those listeners that don't know much about you at all, uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you got into voiceover yourself? Sure. So uh, all growing up. I kind of had a love for music. You know, music was really uh, powerful for me. In fact, I remember, you know, my grandparents lived in Baltimore, so we would take a lot of road trips to see them. And my dad would just always have music on in the car. So I would constantly be listening to the radio on those trips because we would go to see him every other weekend or so. Uh, so, you know, I would hear the radio station and I would hear the the jockey on the air and I would hear what they were doing and I would hear the liners and just all the production value that I would hear that went along with that music. And I thought, what a cool job to be able to work at a radio station, you know, and get paid to do that. And uh, so that's kind of what led me to it. From that point, uh, just to having that interest in radio, you know, I kind of thought radio was what I wanted to do. Uh, right. So I actually, before even starting at the radio station, I was pretty young. I don't even know the age, maybe 15, somewhere in that age. Um, I There were some online radio stations I would listen to. And I would do what's called liners for them which is the little the little clips that you hear between the songs so i was listening oh. to them yeah and i thought well you know could i do that so i did it right from my bedroom that i had at the time you know living with my parents and I, it was just some cheap computer microphone you know the the microphone itself probably wasn't any bigger than your pinky uh <laughs> but i recorded it and i sent it to them Two, it was two online radio stations and i sent it samples to them and uh, they liked it, and they ended up hiring me to do some liners for them. Wow. Yeah. So that was kind of my first paying job in voiceover, just doing those liners uh, for, the, for the online radio stations. And then, uh, you know, I still had an interest in radio. So I ended up interning at a local radio station uh, shortly after that. And I just stayed in the production room for hours at, at a time, and I was, you know, creating promos and commercials and all that. And I thought, you know, what I would want to do is get on the air eventually. But then it turned out that I was happier in the production room. So I worked my way up at the radio station. I became operations manager. But then I found that I just wasn't doing anything related to audio production at that time. So mm -hmm. that's when I decided to leave the radio station. And at that time, I had a few clients doing, I was doing voiceover work for at the time. Uh, so by that time, I just left the radio station and started doing voiceover full time. Oh wow! So you, you took the dive and uh, you yeah. went straight in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luckily, I I wasn't making a ton of money at the radio station, so there wasn't a ton of money I had to make up at the time. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because I remember in one of your podcasts, you actually mentioned one of the things you would have told yourself if you knew it when you were younger is quit the day job earlier so you can be yeah. available. Yeah. Yep. I think yeah. that I lost a lot of jobs just because I wasn't available at the time, you know, and that's hard for anyone. If you have a full-time job and you're not auditioning as quickly as someone else, a lot of times it'll go to the first person who sounds good enough and is available. So if you're not available, uh, I think that you just miss out on opportunities. Yeah, for sure. And, and where were you auditioning at the time? Was there, was there a play to play sites then, or was this through your own contacts that you've made from your own marketing? Yeah, a lot of those were just local commercials that I were doing, local companies that I were doing. Com I was doing commercials for, uh, but also the voice guy at that station. So by the time I was operations manager, I was you know working with that voice guy a lot to get the deliveries that we wanted. Uh, you know, so I was kind of working with him, and he was teaching me uh, kind of like a mentorship, teaching me how uh, to get work on my own. So eventually, I marketed uh, direct marketing. Uh, I sent out CDs to hundreds of radio stations uh, across the country. And I ended up getting a couple, uh, I would say, medium market radio stations uh, at okay. the time. So they put me on retainer for a couple of years. So I was able to, you know, get clients or, or do work that way. Brilliant.
Yeah. I mean, what a, you know, I mean, how times have changed. I mean, you, you had to send out CDs. I know. know. <laughs> and with a business card, I would throw a business card in uh, and mail the CD and hope to get a call back. My God, that yeah. must have been quite, um, quite nerve wracking because you just, you send those things, you spend your money on them, you send them out and you're like, okay, let's wait in here. Yeah. A lot of it, you know, went unanswered, but the few that you get back, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, and it, it, I was, I loved it. I loved, you know, being the voice of radio, a few radio stations around the country. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I that was the dream. That was what I heard from the voice, you know, the guy that we were using, he was doing that. So I wanted to see how I could do that. And that was my dream. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, um, I had a similar dream actually when I was a teenager, I, I did hospital radio and I was doing some presenting on that and I wanted to actually make a career in radio. Um, yeah. but it didn't quite work out that way. And, um, it's only now that I've reached this age that I've thought, you know, now's the time to get back into it. I'm not necessarily looking to get into radio again, but you know, behind the mic, recording my voice, creating something amazing for people to, to enjoy or be educated from. And you know, that's, that's kind of my motivation for that. Yeah. I love the creative outlet of voiceover. And even when I was at the radio station, it was the creation of the, the audio production that I loved. Yeah. Excellent. And when you first started out, what, what kind of setup did you have? I mean, you've got a beautiful studio now with a nice mic. What, what, I know you mentioned earlier this little pinky mic, but when you, when you advanced up from that, what, what kind of did you move up to as a starter? Yeah. So one of the great things about the radio imaging niche that I was in was I was, you know, I was also doing full production on the voiceover. So it wasn't just the voiceover. I was having to add the effects and the you know, the, oh, the wow. echoes and the flange and all that stuff to Doing it the whole as well. Thing, huh? Yeah. So the good thing about the cheap microphone that I was using was that, you know, I didn't have any treatment in the room at all because it, it really didn't matter at the time. I was adding so much echo and reverb and flange and, you know, effects on that voice and filters and, you know, distortion because usually they were rock radio stations. So it was a lot of distortion. Nice. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of room reflection didn't make a difference at the time. So, uh, eventually though, uh, somebody that I worked with at the radio station, it was, it was really a good deal and it really kind of changed a lot. He had a, a microphone, uh, it's a electro voice RE 20, okay. which is really popular at radio stations. But right. he, at the time, uh, he had just come into the market, just moved to the, start working at the radio station. And he said, if I did these productions for him, he was also a DJ. Uh, so if I did these productions for him, for his DJ business, he would give me this microphone. So that's what I did. I, I did the audio production for him. He traded me the microphone. So I had a microphone that I could use. Wow. What a deal. Yeah. Yep. So awesome. I don't, I, I used that microphone for several years afterwards, but then I, I, I got rid of it. Yeah. And what, uh, what software did you use at the time to do your recording? So at the very beginning, it was just whatever used to come with Windows. I don't even know what the, the version was that I was using at the time, but it was just like a little, I think it was called Sound Recorder, Windows Audio Recorder, something like that. But it had the mixed paste, paste option. So I could record my voiceover and then I could add in like explosions and thunder effects and stuff like that. And then I moved on to Cool Edit Pro, uh, which now became Adobe Audition. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you essentially start off with one of the best without even knowing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I loved cool edit pro at the time. And I think Adobe's only made it better. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One to note. Yeah. I do. I do like to, I would like to get into Adobe at some point, but, um, I'm sticking with the Reaper that I use for the moment. And once I've, you know, had a few more jobs under my belt, I think then I'll go for the, uh, Adobe subscription. Yeah. Yep. So you can't, you can't buy it outright. Can you, you have to have a subscription. on. Right. There. Right. I, it's funny because I owned it. And then uh, I switched to Mac and I own the Windows version. You know, right before uh, they went to the Creative Cloud where you have to pay the membership fee, I own yeah. the Windows version, but then I went to Mac and I couldn't use it. So I had to jump onto the membership. You see, man, you should stick with PC. I mean, <laughs> what's, what's going on with that? I don't know. It, the, only, the only reason I switched was because I was in some long audiobook projects and it would crash and I just uh, couldn't take that anymore. So no, no. Uh, ever since I've switched, I've never had that issue since. Okay. Well, that's definitely a, a plus and I, I, I'll take that yeah. plus for the, uh, for the max. But plenty of people use windows. So, you know, and I used yeah. it for w years, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm currently on that and I don't know, maybe one day I'll make the switch. We'll okay. see. We'll yeah. see. 
And uh, did you at all get any training from anybody, any coaching as you progressed, you know, once, once you'd moved on to different genres? Right. So I've never had any formal training all wow. throughout the career. I've never had any training at all. The closest thing was most recently I, I hired someone to do a uh, demo for me. And, you know, they coach you through that demo. So there's a little bit yeah. of coaching involved with that. Uh, yeah. So no coach, no formal coaching uh, at all. I've had, a, I've had quite a few mentors, you know, usually for the business end of voiceover. Like I said, the voice guy, Buddy, that I used to work with at the radio station, he yeah. was uh, very helpful, very kind. And, you know, he explained everything to me. And he was, like I said, living the dream. And he just kind of showed me, uh, you know, what I could do at that time to, to, to get in his situation and how he did it. And then I've reached out, you know, at the beginning of the career, I reached out to a lot of people who were higher up in, you know, that you would see like Joe Cipriano. I reached out to him. Mm. I remember early on in my career, he was very kind and very encouraging. And, uh, so, so, you know, I get encouragement from, from mentors of that type, but I don't, I haven't done any coaching. I'm not against coaching at all. I think we're always learning and always, uh, we can always benefit from feedback from a coach. Um, yeah, sure. Thankfully, I do a lot of directed sessions. So the clients kind of become my coach. You know what I mean? I'm in mm. a session, they'll tell me what they want and they'll kind of help me get there. Uh, you know, and if I, if I can't get there, if, if I don't understand something, then I would, I would seek out coaching. But right now I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I think that's actually a very good point is that, um, you know, you are get, essentially getting the training from the directors because they they know how they want you to sound for their script yeah. and and then you you can be corrected straight away you can say it how they want it and then you know job done money in the bank right right and i you know voiceover a lot of it is self direction so it's it's a great skill to learn how to direct yourself and how to interpret the script uh, yeah. just to get that audition you know so coaching can definitely help but for me, the, the directed sessions that I've been able to, to be a part of have helped immensely. Cool. Cool. So how did you, um, like manage to, to get these, uh, clients that were giving you the directed sessions, you know, when you, when you first started out, I mean, was it, were you primarily, primarily doing a lot of, a, a lot of direct marketing or was it, um, I mean, did you, yes. Yeah, did you ever do the direct marketing or? Uh, sorry, not did you ever do it? I know you've done that, but yeah, to get these clients to do the directed sessions, was that mostly through the, the, the marketing that you did or was it? It was a mixture. Sales? Yeah, it was a mixture. Uh, a lot of the direct marketing were not directed sessions. Okay. You know, a lot of the marketing that you would do is just, they email you the script and you record the script and send it back to them. Uh, and then like a few years into it, you know, because I was able, because I had the radio stations that were paying me to do the voiceover for them you know, in the very beginning. So I kind of used that money and reinvested it. I did get a membership to a pay to play site at that time. And it was the first one I ever had was for voices.com. Um, and I was able to, uh, I th actually, I think, you know, when I first, I don't remember exactly the timeline of it, but I remember doing a contest that they had some kind of promotion. Um, and you, you create a voiceover. I think it was for their product, you know, for their brand. And uh, I won that. So they gave me a, I think it was a year's membership to their service. I don't remember if I was already a member at that time or if, uh, if that was what led me to them in the beginning. But being on the pay to play, to play sites, uh, you know, there's more opportunity there and people have jobs right away. A lot of them want uh, directed sessions. So that's where I picked up quite a few directed sessions. Cool. Okay. So yeah. it could be yeah, beneficial to spread your wings a little bit do pay to plays and also directly market. Yeah. I think it's good to have a mixture. Yeah. Okay. And did you, did you, well, do you find there's quite a lot of lingo when you get in the directed sessions or, or when you're, when you're working with your client, um, do they have like a certain expectancy of you knowing what they're talking about and knowing how to adjust yourself and where, where do you kind of learn that? Yeah, I think probably, you know, back in the day when I was working with the voice guy at the radio station, I was directing him a lot. It wasn't necessarily live, but I knew exactly what I wanted from him. So I was comfortable with the lingo and voiceover at the time. Uh, it's changed some, you know, there's, there's some words that I hear in sessions now and I don't, I have no idea what they're talking about, but you know, everyone's kind. 
the something you have to remember is you're in that session because they liked something about you. You know what I mean? They like something about your voice to bring you into that, to give you that job. So you're on point. They're just going to tweak a little, a, a few things to get you where they want you to be. Yeah. Uh, and uh, lingo wise, I think uh, everything's pretty self-explanatory once you get in it. You know, there's a few words that might pop up from time to time that you just ask, you know, ask them to clarify. Yeah. Uh, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Do what? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times they'll say, does that make sense? Because they, they're trying to explain what they hear in their head. Yeah. And do you find them to be generally quite friendly or are they kind of like, bah, 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 you know? No, I find them, I, I would say all of them are friendly. Yeah. It's nice. very easy going. It's very, like I said, that, that gives me comfort just knowing that uh, they liked the audition enough to bring me into the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't have you there if they didn't like something about you. And they're typically very friendly people. True. At least the ones I work with. That's cool. Yeah. And, and if um, I, if there are, if they aren't friendly, I probably don't work with them again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks guys. See you later. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as well. So obviously the, 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 the ideal scene is to get repeat works from these guys as well. So, um, do you make a point of, being really you know friendly and professional with them and and do you do you follow up again with them a bit later on like hey how did how did the job go do you want some more how do you how do you play that to form the relationship yeah so my number one goal is just to have a satisfied cl uh, client or customer you know right. that's that's number one uh if they weren't happy with it for some reason I, there's no way i'm going to make them pay for it um okay. so i want them to be happy i want them to be satisfied uh, and then, you know, a job is great, but a repeat client is like the golden ticket. Um, right. So that's what I really strive for. I really want that repeat uh, customer, you know, and that's, uh, it, it's, it, it can change your business just by having repeat customers. Uh, so sure. basically how I do it is I would, um, you know, first you do a great job for the customer. Um, yeah. Like I said, you want to really impress them and make it so that they enjoy working with you. And then uh, you do have to stay in touch, but every every contact or communication you have with them is a touch, you know? So if you, uh, like you said, check in with them right after the project, make sure everything's okay, that's a touch. Check in or maybe send an invoice, that's a, that's a touch. You know, yeah. follow up with them a month later, make sure everything's still good or do they have any pickup lines? Um, okay. So definitely follow up with clients. Uh, right. And you don't want to become annoying. You know, you don't want to be like begging for work. Um, but what I do typically is I will just tell clients when I'm going to be out of the studio. You know, I, 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 I like to take vacations. I don't want to be stuck in the studio my entire life. Uh, so I tell clients when I'm going to be out of the studio uh, just so that they can kind of, you know, plan around that. But also, even if you do a great job for the customer, for the client, if time goes by, they don't have a script for you, odds are they're going to forget you. You know, right. I mean, there's people that I've hired that have done great work for me, not, not in voiceover, but just in life. They've done great work, but I haven't had the need for their service. Uh, you know, and time goes by, you, you switch your phone, you lose their number, you lose an email. You have no way of contacting them again when you need that service again. Right. So it's up to us as voice actors to stay in touch with them. Uh, you know, until they say, we don't need your service anymore. You know, they, yeah. they could say that, but uh, it's up to us to stay in touch. And then they're, you're constantly reminding them uh, that you're available, you're still in business, you know, that you're still doing it and you're still, you can still uh, record voiceover for them. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And um, I noticed that your website, voiceacting101.com is very much uh, a resource for people uh, to get knowledge of how to start in voiceover. So what motivated you to want to start sharing your knowledge for others to get into it? Yeah, so, uh, well, first, you know, when I was starting, people were kind enough to help me. Like I said, the, the voice guy at the radio station, he just shared everything that he knew about the business. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. I just wanted to share what I knew, uh, giving them the most simple path that I thought, you know, if I were doing this again today, what were the most important steps uh, to get to where I, where, where I am today? 
Yeah. Uh, so that's why I came out, you know, I just kind of laid it out in a step-by-step -step plan. Um, and then I wanted it to be simple. You know, some, some, it, it feels like I don't check them anymore, but there were some Facebook groups that I just felt like they were, uh, you know, not kind to the, the newcomer. So I wanted a, a website that I could send people to if they had questions, uh, that was hopefully gave them the information that they were looking for. Yeah. And also, you know, I was getting a lot of, uh, emails back in the day about, uh, how do you get started in voiceover and, you know, how do you get work in voiceover? So I wanted to create these guides just to put out there, uh, for anyone who contacted me, uh, you know, with interest in voiceover. And there were, there were people online that were emailing me. I'm not sure how they found me, but they would just find my voiceover website and they were interested in it. So they would email me, but even in, in real life, you know, going to a birthday party, somebody would find out that I do voiceover and it, <clears throat> it's an interesting career. Uh, and they would, you know, be like, what you work from home, you work with people around the world. You know, it's, it's unbelievable to a lot of people. Uh, they kind of didn't know that it existed. So yeah. they have, uh, interest in it and they're like, well, how do I get started? You know, or, or somebody would say, well, my brother's got a great voice. You want to use him for some voiceover? And I'm like, that's not exactly how voiceover works. Uh, you know, from, you know, I, clients kind of hire me for my voice, but you could do it on your own. So I just wanted a way to provide resources to people that were showing interest in it. Yeah, that's really cool. And the great thing as well about you is the fact that you, you, you're very open for people to reach out to you and you, you answer their emails as well. Yeah. I try to answer every single email that I receive. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, you know, a lot of times I can just route them to a resource that's already been created, but that's how I create new resources just based on the questions that come in. Right. And, uh, and I know you've also developed a, a couple of courses. Uh, you did, you, you've made a course called, uh, VO Launchpad. Yeah. Which, uh, which I've done, which is absolutely amazing. And what Thank I you. love about your courses is, is the fact that you are very A to B, you know, you don't dress it up. You don't make it fancy and drag it out for ages. You just say, right, this is what you need to do and just watch me do it. And you actually yeah. give examples of how it's done. Yeah, I've taken uh, several courses myself, not even in voiceover, just in other areas. And I've found that I've, I've learned the most when it's laid out like that, you know, without what I would call like filler. Uh, right. It's just, how do you get from here to here to here? What are the steps that you have to take to get from A to B? Yeah. Uh, so that's what, how I've tried to, to lay it out in voiceover launch plan. Um, you know, and that was, you know, I, I try to provide that information for free on the website, you know, as a resource. Uh, but then there are some people who just want the step-by-step -step plan uh, that, you know, want even less overwhelm that's, that, you know, searching the website might give them. Yeah. Yeah. It's great because you can actually spend many, many hours, if not days or weeks, trawling the internet for information. And yeah. then you get bits and bobs from all over the place. And then you have to somehow try and make sense of it. So to have, to have it all in one place, like, like you have in your course is, is brilliant. Thank you. And, um, <clears throat> and is that course available for anybody to do at any time or do they, or do you only release it at certain times of the year? Yeah, it's only, uh, it only opens a couple of times a year. So, uh, okay. I think I'm not sure when the next one will open. I'll have to check the schedule. Uh, I'm trying to be better about that. A lot of, you know, last year it was, I just got busy with voiceover. It's kind of a, a time dedication when new students come in. So I try to limit it a little bit. Yeah. Um, not that I'm super involved with it, but I, you know, I get emails and questions even in the course. Um, sure, yeah. So, so it's a couple times a year that it opens usually. Okay, cool. Excellent. And, um, <clears throat> and then the other course, uh, you have voiceover marketing that works. Uh, what, um, what prompted you to, to do this course or even create this course? Yeah. So that was probably the number one question that I would receive would be, how do you find work? You know, and there are several different ways that you can get work in voiceover. Uh, and some of them are going to pay better than others. You know, some people would, some people had no work, uh, I was finding and no income and they weren't sure why some people had tried, uh, some of the other ways voiceover marketing that works really dives into email marketing, which is yeah. what I did from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I think it's the it's the best way to build a voiceover business is with direct marketing. Uh, right. you know, pay to plays are great because they, they have so many, uh, job postings every day. Um, but a lot of them, 
that is not your client. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't, you can't have direct communication with that client through the pay to play. You have right. to go through that platform. Uh, so if that platform goes out of business or they want to raise their rates or whatever, whatever they want to do, they have, they're free to do that. So to build a sustainable business, I think that you have to have direct communication with those clients. Right. And that's what email marketing does. And that's, uh, it goes into, you know, step-by-step -step detail inside the course. It does. Uh, I've, I've done the course and I, and I must say that I, I got immediate responses from people that I emailed. I was, I was amazed, you know, the way that you've set out the, you know, the, the techniques of how you actually, you know, uh, uh, produce the email itself and the subject line and the content of it. I think it's, it's really good. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a lot about just being different, standing out, which is something yeah. that you have to do in voiceover. You know, your audition has to stand out amongst however many auditions that they're listening to. Same thing with your email marketing. You know, I, I still get emails from, from voice actors who want to want me to send them work, but it is just, you know, there's, there's lessons on voice acting 101 that talk about it, but you know, the emails are just, I, 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 I want this. Right. I, I do this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm available. And it's like, it's all about that person. And that's not what email marketing should be. Right. Yeah. So they should do the course and find out more about how they, how they should be done. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So how, how did you develop these? I mean, are you also a, a computer whiz and you're able to create these, these software packages and do all these videos and stuff, you know, are you like yeah. really geek and you do it all yourself? <laughs> no, definitely not a uh, computer whiz. I'm comfortable with them. You know, I've yeah. been using, using them for so many years. I'm comfortable with them. Um, yeah. but I do have a, uh, some assistants that help me with putting the videos together you know, and, uh, and, and designing the, the website. I use a software called Thrive Architect for all my websites. Okay. Uh, it, and it's, I think that's talked about in uh, voiceover launch plan. Uh, it goes into detail about Thrive Architect, but it's a great uh, platform where it's, it's kind of like Wix, if, if anyone's ever used Wix before, you know, drag and drop, but it just yeah. gives you so much control. So it's, you know, you really don't have to be a coder or, a, or HTML geek or whatever uh, to do it. So they're all built with Thrive Architect, which makes it super simple. Wow. Yeah. Cause they're really good yeah. as well. Yeah, very, very professional and they, they deliver the goods. Yeah. As yep. well, which is, Thank you. Which is what you need. And um, staying on the marketing theme of things, I know that uh, you also have, um, another platform that you've got called uh, find leads fast and so what what boy you, you know what's this about and, and what uh, motivated you to create this resource for people yeah so uh i saw the value in uh direct marketing email marketing uh but it wasn't as easy as you know what i would hope it to be you know and i've tried several things i've tried uh well first you know everyone knows google it's a great resource you can find all kinds of companies. I mean, it's a pretty simple process. If you are doing voiceover and you know the type of customer that you want to work with, the company that you want to work with, you can do a quick Google search and you have hundreds of those types of companies. So all you, you know, you're reaching out to these companies in the right way, but keeping track of all that is kind of a pain. And I've tried it with Excel spreadsheets. I've tried uh, all kinds of ways to do it, to, to make it simpler. Uh, and I struggled with it. And I just knew that you know, anyone else who was trying to do it, it, there's a more efficient way to do it. And that's with Find Leads Fast. And it's a pretty simple application, but, uh, you know, you do a Google search, you find the, the good leads that you're interested in reaching out to. They're not all going to be good. You know, some of them are going to be educational sites or universities or uh, uh, social media sites. So you can mark those as bad, like a, a bad lead that you, you don't want to ever see again in your, in your search, in your research. So it just saves you time in that research, uh, stage. And when you're doing the email marketing, that's great. Yeah. And then once they have, uh, that list of leads that they've created, what do, can they do anything with that then? You know, what's, what's the, they, they just, yeah. I don't know what. Yeah, they could, uh, you know, once they have that list, they would go to those websites and they would find, uh, the best person to contact. And then they would reach out to that person. Uh, and, you know, ask them or talk to them about voiceover. Okay, cool. And yeah. I guess that then leads on to the next obvious thing that somebody would need, which would be a place to put all these contacts. 
right. which would obviously be a CRM, right? Now, I know there's a lot of different CRMs out there, but you decided to also develop one of those. So yeah. So, one? yeah. So again, you know, it's all about uh, making it, trying to make it more efficient. That was the goal. You know, when you're a one person business, like we are, you can't spend all your time doing every single task that's uh, part of running the business. You know, we're most valuable behind the microphone, either auditioning or actually doing the work. That, those are the two things that we should be doing the most often. Everything else, if somebody else can do it, that would be best. But if there are things that applications or computers can do, that's even better. So the, the issue that I ran into, I had a CRM, which is customer relationship management. Uh, so you keep all your customer contact information in there. And then I had an invoicing service. So I had two different services and I was entering information into both of them, you know, and it just was taking so much time to do that. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could just have them both in the same application so I could see, you know, this client is paying this much per year and I'm doing this much work with this client. And so it all correlates. Uh, and I couldn't find a solution that did that. And I tried several CRMs, but a lot of them were just overcomplicated again for the one person business. I thought it was just too much. It talks about groups and, you know, uh, all kinds of advanced features that I just didn't need myself. So that's where the idea for, for Spitfire came in. I was spending a lot of time invoicing and, you know, I'd even done it back in the day where I had a Word document and I was just changing the invoice number and changing the date and changing, you know, all those little details on that invoice so I could send it out. And right. it just took forever uh, yeah, yeah. to do that. So Spitfire just handles all that. It, 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 even, you know, even things like if you send an invoice and it's not paid, it would be good to follow up with that invoice. You know, it's, it, I'm sure they didn't do it on purpose, but it probably slipped through the cracks for some reason. So uh, Spitfire can do that. They, it can automatically remind that person with like a custom message that you create. Wow. So it's, it's all about saving time for the one person business. That was the whole idea behind uh, uh, Fine Leads Fast and Spitfire. That's great. Because then they also... It, it, it takes away your having to memorize, you know, remember, oh, I've got to, I've got to contact that person. I've got to remind that person. I've got to, you know, chase up that invoice, you know, so the, the CRM does it for you basically, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just takes those tasks that you uh, may not need to think about or you need to think about it, but you don't necessarily have the time to think about it and it automates them. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. I like it. Yeah. And it's great. You know, it's, it's grown more than I ever imagined. You know, I came up with the idea for it. It was pretty simple, but the users have really, uh, you know, given suggestions that what makes it work better for them. And I love that. You know, yeah. I love the, the creative spirit of the, the user base of Spitfire, how it's, yeah. uh, you know, there's things in there that I don't even use, but the users find them helpful. So That's good. Uh, it's things I wouldn't have thought of. Nice. It's like building a whole community there and looking after the guys. Yeah. That's, yep. That's really cool. And it's great. That, that was another reason, you know, I'd reached out to CRMs and asked them, you know, can you put this feature in and you just don't get a response from them. No, That's right. not what I want for Spitfire. I want, you know, the community to say what they want included and we actually do it. Yeah. Brilliant. And I guess that's the beauty of communication. You know, you keep your communication lines open, you know, people can just contact you and you reply back and say, Hey, yeah, great. Good idea. Thanks a lot. Right. Let's do that. Yeah. You know, I think that's yeah. important very much. So yeah, it's, it's good to be involved. Space. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, okay. you got the voiceover business. So you have the, um, you know, these courses and the, in the platforms, where do you see your career going on from here? What's the, what's the plan for Mr. McCoy? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I'm pretty happy where I am. Uh, yeah. The niche, I've tried a lot of niches out there over the years. Yeah. Uh, right now, my main focus is commercials and e-learning. That seems okay. to be what fits my lifestyle right now because, of, you know, like I, I've got three kids uh, under the age of nine. I, I like to spend a lot of time with them. You know, when I was into the radio imaging, it was a lot of, uh, you can't take a vacation. You, you know, wow. because we're, we're, we need you to, to do the, the voiceover. So, uh, and there's other demanding ones, uh, uh, niches out there. And so I've tested them mm. for my, uh, life right now, you know, especially with COVID everybody being home, uh, right now, commercials doing directed sessions with com clients and producers and, uh, writers and directors, uh, that's, that's right for my life at this time and e-learning you know e-learning is long form content but 
Uh, it gives you several days to do it. And time, I guess time is my most valuable asset right now. Right. Um, so I'm trying to use it to the best of my ability. And some of the other niches that I would be interested in, I might do later on once the kids are a little older. Yeah. Yeah. Just experiment a bit more with some of those or advance into yeah. those. Yeah. And, and I used to work on vacation. I don't want to work on vacation anymore. I want my, I want a vacation. So holidays for holidays. Yeah. No, I, I see some voiceovers on, uh, you know, on YouTube and that, which, you know, they're spending their vacation doing their voiceover work. It's like, hang right. on guys, is yeah. it a vacation or not? You know, what if you're with your family and they're like, oh, dad's gone off again into the cupboard. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. And then you don't come back as refreshed. You know, I love what I do, but I definitely need a break from it. You know, just to, your creativity starts to die down, I think. And then you yeah. go on a vacation, you come back and you're, you're eager to get back in the studio and get back to work. For sure. Yeah. And do you think if you went into, let's say, uh, character acting, if you wanted to get into, vo into, uh, computer games later on, would you, would you get any coaching for that? Would you do some acting classes or? Yeah, would I would like think so. Straight in and do it? Uh, you know, I've, I've only done a very small character acting. I haven't done, I haven't done much in the past. So I feel like I don't know enough about it. I would, I think in that case, I would need some coaching. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's always worth, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, as, uh, as my last question, I always uh, ask this with my, um, my guests and it sometimes foxes them a little bit, but I'll, I'll see yeah. how you go. Okay. Uh, is, is, there, is there, is there anything I can do to help you out? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Well, first, that's a great question. You know, I love that you ask that question. Um, and it's just like what you were talking about, you know, being different. Nobody asks that nobody asks, right. what can I do for you? Yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, I love what you're doing. I love that you're sharing your experience. I wish that I started sharing mine earlier on. Uh, so I love that you're sharing everything, you know, about starting up. So right. I would just say, continue that, that, that would help me and help others. Um, it would, you know, encourage others and, uh, just help them to see that it can be done. So yeah. I would say, just keep doing what you're doing. Okay, man. Your wish is my command. Okay. <laughs> I will do that. And listen, I want to really, you know, I give you my deepest, deepest thanks for spending your precious time, uh, this morning to do this interview with me. I really do appreciate that, Jason. Oh, it was my pleasure. And it's great to uh, talk to you. Yeah, you too. You too. And, uh, hopefully we'll see each other again, maybe in a, in a year or two and we'll have a, another interview and, uh, yeah. maybe I'll have a longer beard next time and <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe this hairline will go back a little bit, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it progressed and you can always, you know, yeah. subscribe to the channel and keep up with the, uh, keep up with the progress. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, man. Thank you very much. And, uh, speak again sometime later. Okay. Cheers now. What a top man. That was great. I really enjoyed that chat and what a great guy. And I tell you, he is so, so helpful. And I really do recommend that you go and visit his website, voiceacting101.com. And he's got lots of resources on there and information about how you can develop yourself as a voice actor, as a business. And I would also recommend that you check out his courses. So I've put some links below for you to click onto and check them out. And Maybe one of them might not be open just yet, but you can always maybe register yourself or just keep a track of it so that when the course is open, you can then register yourself to, to enter it and do that course because they are brilliant and you get lifetime access. And of course, the information there you can use for the whole of your career, which is something that I am as well doing myself as well. And just to let you know, it is an affiliate link. So if you do click on the link and you do end up doing a course, then I will get some kickback from that. And it's the first one I've ever done. So I don't know, let's see. Um, but I'm happy to promote courses which are in our best interests as well as voice actors. Okay. So check them out and let me know if you do a course and also if you get some good value out of those courses too. And I will see you next month for this round of interviews. You'll see me again on lots of other in lots of other videos but i will see you again uh, in a month's time for the next interview where we'll be talking to a very special guest so thanks for watching i'll catch you next time ciao for now